Mr. President, I want to ask you about accountability. You're, you're a big believer in it. You've talked about it with uh, regard to the public schools. But um, given the performance of Iraqi leaders, given your decision to commute the sentence of Louis Libby, um, you've also stood by the Attorney General recently. There have been a lot of questions about your commitment to accountability. And I'm wondering if you could give the American people some clear examples of how you've held people accountable during your presidency. Louis Libby was held accountable. He was uh, declared guilty by a jury, and he paid, he paid a high price for it. Uh, Al Gonzalez, uh, in, implicit in your questions, is that Al Gonzalez did something wrong. I haven't seen Congress say he's done anything wrong. As a matter of fact, uh, I believe, uh, David, we're watching a political, you know, a, a political exercise. I mean, this is a man who... Uh, He's testified. He sent thousands of you know, papers up there. there. There's no proof of wrong. Why would I hold somebody accountable who has done nothing wrong? I mean, I, 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 frankly, I, I think that's a typical Washington, D.C. assumption, not to be accusatory. I'm, I know you're a kind, open-minded fellow. But you suggested holding the, the, the attorney general accountable for something he did wrong. And as a matter of fact, I would hope Congress would become uh, more prone to deliver pieces of legislation that matter as opposed to being the investigative body. I mean, it, there have been over 600 different hearings, and yet they're struggling with getting appropriations bills to my desk. If I, if I and, Sorry. G given, given the decision to commute the sentence of, of Libya, given the performance of Iraqi leaders, is it fair for people to ask questions about your commitment to accountability? I, I would hope people would say that uh, uh, that I uh, am deliberate in my decision making. I think about all aspects of the decisions I make, and I'm a fair person. And uh, the uh, back to Iraq, it's uh, no question. There's haven't made as much progress as I would have hoped. But I also recognize how difficult the task is. And I repeat to you, the fundamental question is, does it matter whether or not there is a self-governing entity that's an ally in the war on terror in Iraq? Does it matter? Does it matter to, you know, a guy living in Crawford, Texas? Does it matter to your children? Uh, as you know from these press conferences, and I have come to the conclusion that it does matter. And it does matter because uh, enemies that would like to do harm to the American people would be emboldened by failure. I recognize there's a debate here in America as to whether or not failure in Iraq would cause there to be more danger here in America. I strongly believe that's the case. It matters if the United States does not believe in the universality of freedom. It matters to the security of people here at home if we don't work to change the conditions that caused 19 kids to be lured onto airplanes to come and murder our citizens. So the first question one has to ask on Iraq is, is it worth it? I, I could not send a mother's child into combat if I did not believe it was necessary for our short-term and long-term security to succeed in Iraq. Once you come to the conclusion that it's worth it, then the question you must ask is, how difficult is the task of a young democracy emerging? Uh, those who study the Articles of Confederation would recognize that there are difficult moments in young democracies emerging, particularly after, in this case, tyrannical rule. That's not to say that, uh, Dave, we shouldn't be pushing hard for all opportunities for reconciliation. Um, but for those of us who believe it's worth it, we'll see progress. For those who believe it's not worth it, there is no progress. And that's going to be the interesting debate. And what it's going to come down to is whether or not the United States should be in Iraq and in the region in a position to enable societies to begin to, you know, em embrace liberty for the long term. This is an ideological struggle. Now, I recognize some don't view it as an ideological struggle, but I firmly believe it is an ideological struggle. And I believe it's a struggle between the forces of moderation and reasonableness and good and the forces of murder and intolerance. 
And what has made the stakes so high is that those forces of murder and intolerance have shown they have the capacity to murder innocent people in our own country. And so the, I put that in the context of accountability. In the case of Iraq, it's a, it's, it's a lot more complicated than just the passage of four laws, even though I would hope they would get the four laws passed. And, but again, I repeat, the threshold question, does it matter? Does it matter to our security here at home? And the answer is absolutely it does. It does. And then the second question really for a lot of Americans is can we succeed? And in my mind, the answer to that is absolutely not only we must succeed, succeed we can succeed. Listen, thank you all for your time. I uh, appreciate it.